This is Chuck from Simply Nook, and I have an exciting new product from Intel, Nook Division. As you can see, this is a pre-production engineering sample, but uh, I'm shooting this video for it to launch with the product, so you should be able to pre-order it today when you see this video, or it may be in production. This uh, may already be on the internet, and, and uh, you can go over to Simply Nook, and you can order this perhaps by then. But this is a Nook 8, it's considered an 8th gen. It is based on a, a, a like an Apollo Lake Celeron. It is kind of the revised version. And then it's called Chaco Canyon, so the CH is Chaco, and then the K is because it's the short profile case. And we're gonna take a look at it. Now, the uh, accessories are gonna be a little bit different on this product. Uh, in the box is not a Visa plate. We have our uh, power supply and power cord and the manuals and, and uh, some unusual screws that has some various mounting options. So, and that's about it. Uh, there's no Visa plate because this one will, uh, Simply Nook will be providing a DIN mounting plate for this so that you can use this in more uh, commercial building environments. So uh, we'll take a look at the uh, unit next. All right, let's take a look at the new Chaco Canyon. Uh, first, you'll notice that it is not your traditional uh, four by four. This is actually about four by six by about an inch and a half. And uh, it is fanless. There is no vent holes anywhere on it. It's, um, it's very low wattage. All right, let's take a look at the IO. First, we have a recessed power button. And so something hitting the front of this would not activate the power button. We have a USB 3.0 port, super speed port. We have this IO expansion panel and Simply Nuck will be uh, stocking several accessories. Uh, what's currently on plan is a ethernet, uh, I'm sorry, a um, serial port to get your, your RS-232 serial out. We are working on a PoE uh, port that'll give you another gigabit port as well as power for the unit. Uh, so, very highly desired option, and there'll be some other options we're working on for this. Next, we have our Kensington lock, cable lock, and so uh, if you need to secure this in some installation, then you've got your standard Kensington lock hole. All right, looking at the back, we've got our standard 5.5 by 2.5 DC power plug. Uh, very traditional, it says 19 volts. This is actually rated from 12 to 24 volt. So wide voltage range. And uh, this is a great new feature. This is a strain relief for the power cable. Now, it's, I guess technically you could use it for a USB cable as well, but you loosen the screw, you plug your power cord in, you loop the power cord under one or more of these little T hooks, and then you tighten the screw down and now you've got a re retained uh, power cord. You don't have to worry about it unplugging if the nook is in a uh, situation where there's m motion and cables are flexing around and you don't want the power to unplug accidentally. And we have a gigabit ethernet port, two USB 2.0 ports, yes, 4K, and one of them supports pr uh, protected content. We have another USB 3.0 port and two USB 2.0 ports, and then we have an HD audio line out port. So this would go like to your uh, powered speakers or to a sound system. And then these two little dim, uh, rubber plugs here are for SMA uh, antennas. And so while the unit has a built-in AC radio uh, going to internal antennas, uh, if you're in a situation where this is in a metal box and you need better radio coverage, Simply Nut can install the coax cables for you and provide you with either extension cables, SMI or SMA extension cables, as well as uh, high gain antennas for you to mount outside your unit. All right, taking a look at the bottom, we've got some uh, new mounting options. Uh, we'll start off with the traditional Nook uh, PIM nuts that hold the, uh, for the shoulder screws, which allow you to mount it to uh, like a Visa mount kit that mounts on the back of your monitor. Uh, now we have the two keyholes. These are very common uh, for the telco industry, uh, for people mounting 
switches and equipment to the modems and so on to the wall of a telco room where you have one of those plywood boards that's mounted on the wall. You run a couple of wood screws into the plywood board. You don't run the heads all the way in. You have a little bit of a gap. You line these up on the heads and, and push it over and then slide the heads on the inside of this and it just hangs on those heads. And this is really, really common. Uh, this is a highly desirable feature here. And then Intel's gotten even further with the versatility of this product. And they've added these little four loops of metal. And what these are for is zip ties. So let's say you, you can't mount this in a traditional way. Well, now you can run zip ties and you can zip tie it to some truss, uh, speaker stand, uh, even um, drapes if you have a show set up and you need to mount the nook somewhere you can zip tie it to a bundle of drapes uh, or you can even zip tie it to your backpack and and this this is a great computer for like uh, backpacks um, because it's only about six watts of operating power very low powered all right so that's the new Chaco Canyon look uh, taking a look at the outside and next we're going to take a look at the inside so stay with me all right, next we're going to take a look at the inside, but before we do, I've donned my anti-static smock and a wrist strap. Uh, anytime you're working with exposed electronics, you want to make sure that you don't discharge a static discharge straight to uh, the sensitive components because they might not fail right away, but they will uh, after some time, and then you won't equate it back to when you uh, discharge. You'll just say, huh, it failed. Well, it worked for months, so it couldn't have been the static discharge. Taking a look at the bottom plate, we have our thermal solution for the SSD, and we have our standoffs for the I.O. accessory. So the optional I.O. accessory would bolt in here and stick through that panel, and we're going to take a look at that. All right, let's take a look at the inside. First thing I'm going to do is take out this little I.O. panel. There's a couple of plastic snaps that comes out. You can see the EMI shielding, and let's take a look at the inside now. All right. Uh, first thing, we'll start from this side. We have the USB 3.0 port. We have two USB 2.0 ports. We have our front panel power switch. And next to it, we have a front panel connector. This has a power uh, switch support, power LED, suspend LED or sleep, and a drive activity LED. So if you need remote power, you need remote uh, LEDs, you can plug them in here and run them remote. You can even run them through this little opening. We have our power connector. So this is a four pin power connector. It's the same one that's found on the commercial products. This is kind of a commercial fanless ruggedized product. This connector is probably a debugging connector to the processor and won't be there in production. I would expect this not to be stuff, but a lot of times early prototypes have this so that they can probe the processor and find out, uh, you know, debug issues. This is an EPD connector, so this will support an electron, uh, the the um, E-type panels, uh, display port panels. We have a removable battery. These batteries are typically good for at least five years, but as you can see, it's easily accessed if you need to remove it. Uh, BIOS reset LED. Speaking of the BIOS, the BIOS on this one's in a socket because this is a prototype board. Uh, the socket won't be there in production. The, the chip would just be soldered down. We have our RS-232 serial port. And so there will be a panel with a DE9 type uh, connector with a cable run over into here. This is a 2230 M.2 slot for a radio. And we do have one of the latest radios from Intel and I believe it supports Bluetooth 6. Check the specs. We have the 2280 M.2 slot. This supports uh, SSDs. And the unit supports both SATA and PCI Express SSDs. So you got some uh, large storage or large performance, depending on what you need. All right, so that's the inside. I'll just kind of hold it st steady here and let you all pause and zoom if, in if you need. All right, let's take a look at, at the motherboard. Instead of me taking the motherboard out of my Chaco Canyon, I just have the motherboard product. So this is a Nook 8 Celeron Chaco Canyon board or motherboard. All right, and the product 
just comes with the motherboard. There's a, a manual, but that's about it. Not much else you need. You just need that. And I'm going to take out the motherboard. All right, now I'm going to zoom in. All right, motherboard looks like as you saw before. Uh, you'll notice the radio is missing. If you order the motherboard product, there is not a radio included. You have to add the radio, coax cables, and antennas. Simply Knock has all of those accessories for you. And the coax cables we have in different lengths, uh, up to eight feet. So we can take care of your needs. Typically, we uh, you want to put a short radio cable and then use your extenders. But we have all of the accessories. Our salesman can help design your product. Let's take a look at the bottom. There it is. This is a pretty simple design. That is the heat sink. And because the Celeron doesn't generate a lot of heat, this is typically enough. There's a couple of uh, the uh, stainless, or the, what you see the kind of shiny metal instead of the copper is spring steel. When you tighten down these screws, it actually bends that plate and applies the correct force onto the processor. I'm not gonna take that off, but it's just a copper extends it. Now, the interesting thing is, you take the motherboard out of the Chaco or you buy the motherboard product, you get higher temper, higher performance because the plate's able to radiate to, uh, heat better. And if you mount this to your own chassis and sink the heat off in it, you can get higher performance. So the performance metrics that we will give you will be based on the chassis version. There's another debugging connector here. I'm gonna take you take, let you take a look here. Underneath, some of the power supply components. All right, and there you can see the DRAM. Now this has four gig of DRAM soldered down. And some of you might think, well, how do I upgrade it to eight gig? Well, technically this product, most customers are gonna request one to two gig of memory. They're not gonna need four. But with the price of DRAM today, it's actually cheaper to solder four gig in instead of one or two and offer a single SKU. The price of RAM has come down. And it's not like we could only solder down one chip or two chips. This actually is dual channel, so you have high performance in the DRAM. And so there's the motherboard. And kind of giving you a target for this product. This is not going to replace the Arches Canyon or Chalk, uh, Arches or June Canyon nooks. This is targeted to replace their previous Atom product, which is no longer or will not be shipping. It's, it's kind of like in a staged end of life now. So a lot of people were asking for a replacement for the Atom processor. This is more powerful than the Atom and more feature rich and it's a little bit cheaper. So we actually have 64 gig of eMMC memory soldered down for storage. And that's plenty for Windows or Linux or thin Linux. So you don't have to add an SSD for your OS uh, and simply not can load the OS on the MMC. We can also add either a M.2 storage for additional storage or make it the primary boot device to speed up the unit. We also offer uh, artificial intelligence, the Movidius Myriad X chip uh, based M.2 card is available. So you can use this as a perfect solution for collecting data from sensors uh, in a location and using artificial intelligence, uh, offloading the processor and doing it in a VPU. The other uh, op, uh, use of this would be thin clients. And so a thin client where you're using like remote desktop to a PC that's built into your server, uh, in your server farm, and you don't need a lot of power in, in your cubicle. Perfect solution. And then another perfect solution for this is single app, uh, where it boots like a cash register program or a uh, ATM machine or a digital signage and you, you really want everything as small as possible and as low power as possible. And you don't want a fan where you could have potential failures and then have a device failure. So this is ruggedized, it's fanless, it's very low powered, and it's a great product. This is going to fill a lot of customer needs that are sub Celeron uh, looking at single apps, thin clients, or data collection, this is going to be a fantastic product. Really excited about this. I hope you are too. And uh, thank you for watching. Have a good day.